We continue to track breaking news for you tonight. An anti-Islam group is holding an art contest outside of a Phoenix mosque. And those taking part, they're being asked to draw the Prophet Muhammad. You might remember the same kind of contest sparked violence in Texas. So we wanted to know, is this freedom of speech or is it inciting violence? I'm joined now by Ben Himmelstein from Fruitkin Law Firm. He is here with much, Ben, Thanks. for taking some time for us. And some quick background uh, here for you. We spoke with the organizer of this event and about the potential for some violence here. And his exact words were, I would feel horrible, but no, I'm not responsible for that violence. We're just out using our First Amendment. So, Ben, the question is, when it comes to the law, is this freedom of speech or is it inciting violence? I think it's certainly freedom of speech to go out and talk about your political views mm -hmm. and your religious opinions. Uh, there's certainly nothing illegal about that and it's certainly protected by the First Amendment. In fact, the First Amendment even protects advocating violence. It does not protect specific threats to people. Um, so for example, if the organizer had said we're going to bring weapons to storm the mosque and shoot a bunch of Muslim people, that probably is not protected for sure. speech at all. Uh, at the same time, advocating that you should bring weapons to protect yourself, I don't think there's anything illegal about that or anything violative of the First Amendment. And so I know we are kind of asking you the question as a black or white question, but it's really, it's a blurry line here. Absolutely. And, and what are people going to be, you know, looking at when making that call? Does it really come down to, you know, the exact wording that was used? What sorts of things uh, come into analyzing this here? Sure. You know, the, the words that are used are certainly important. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really taken on a case-by-case -case basis. And so the court, if, if, for example, the organizer were to be arrested prior to the rally uh, for inciting violence or something of the like, mm -hmm. uh, the courts are really going to look closely at what was said and how it was said um, and analyze whether there was really actually a threat to a person made or whether he was simply saying, you know, we have a right to protect ourselves in the event that hostility occurs. So we have about 30 seconds left, and uh, we and I were talking about this a little uh, earlier, a few minutes ago. There are words being said in person. There are words being said online. Uh, a lot of different components here. Is this different based on threats or words that are said in person versus on the for instance? I don't think there's any fundamental difference between something said in person or mm -hmm. something said online. In fact, online is usually better evidence used in court sure. because there's a record of it. But at the end of the day, uh, it's really all the same. It's, it's speech. It constitutes speech. All right. Ben Himmelstein, thank you so much for coming in and giving uh, your perspective on this. And our team coverage continues after this.